Hello, everyone, and welcome to this technical takeoff session on Windows 365 Government. My name is Tony Checkle, and I'm a product manager on the Windows 365 team. I'm joined by a few of my colleagues today. Robert, do you want to go next? Sure. My name is Robert Nishi. I'm also with the Windows 365 product team. Greetings, everybody. My name is Roy Barton. I'm a cloud endpoint technical specialist assigned to Microsoft Federal, supporting the civilian federal government. Shannon? Hello, my name is Shannon Young. I'm also a cloud endpoint technical specialist supporting uh, federal civilian customers. Great. Thanks, guys. Let's get started. So government agencies are modernizing and hybridizing their workforces faster than ever before, impacting how they work and how they interact with vendors. One of the items that pops here is the data from Gartner on more than 75% of governments operating workloads using hyperscale cloud service providers. In other words, Microsoft, Amazon, and Google. This is a substantial number by 2025. The drivers here have been focused on cost and scalability. And for government, it's the growing maturity of the cloud services from these hyperscale providers as demonstrated by the compliance and regulatory requirements being incorporated and supported into the core product and services. And we're gonna to touch on that more later. Another area receiving more attention as of late is sustainability. And that the hyperscalers have the global economies of scale to make the investments to continually drive down the energy consumption of their data centers. And one more big one that we cannot forget here is the investment in security capabilities. For Windows 365, there are a few things to call out here on security. Integration of Microsoft Defender for Endpoint with Microsoft Intune as a mobile threat defense solution, enabling threat identification and setting devices as non-compliant for Windows 365 Cloud PCs, just as with any other device. And the ability to define and apply security baselines to Windows 365 Cloud PCs in the same way as any other physical device. And that goes on to, you know, how can the administrators do things like disable screen captures? How do they control RDP redirects? Things like that. All of these capabilities within Windows 365. Roy or Shannon, what are you seeing with customers and how they could take advantage of the security capabilities of Win365? Hey, Tony, that's that's actually an excellent question. And, um, you know, one of the things that comes to mind right off the right off the cusp is uh, the executive order and zero trust. And because of those zero trust mandates, I, I really think that with Windows 365 and the fact that it's no different than any other physical device that we manage, um, it really gives our customer the ability to deploy a uh, simplistic VDI environment while maintaining those high security standards of zero trust. Great. Thank you, Roy. So let's keep moving on. Now, you know, how government agencies, federal, state, local, are really going to be taking advantage of Windows 365? Here's a few, you know, big themes that we have in the product, right? So protecting government data, having, making sure that the data is in US Gov data centers, we're meeting all the compliance and security requirements, reducing the cost and improving efficiency. Look, this is, we're always being asked to do more with less. So how can we, you know, as a service, enable these agencies to achieve their mission and achieve their goals with, you know, fewer resources and still being able to deliver on what they need to do? Tony, um, I wanted to ask you a question about accelerated onboarding. Uh, how many admins would it take to onboard 500 to 1,000 Windows 365 devices? Well, I'm really, I'm really glad you asked about that, Shannon. You know, the, that, that's, a, that's a really important area for us. And one of the big drivers, and we're going to hear about that more later, is, is simplicity. And how do we bring simplicity to the service, to Windows 365? And specifically, you know, if you're thinking about deploying 
hundreds or thousands of cloud PCs. Really, it's one administrator that can handle all of that because the way that we enable the provisioning of these cloud PCs and the management and the tools available to administrators, they're, they're the same tools in, that, that are used for physical devices and they, they'll scale out to hundreds and thousands of cloud PCs. So the acceleration of onboarding, you know, one admin can do that for, in your, to your question, for hundreds or thousands of cloud PCs. Thank you, Tony. Okay, so let's let's so start really Tony, deep. Uh, good, good, right? Uh, I'm sorry, t t Tony. So, so you're telling me that even even for federal government customers that want to bring their own image, like it, it's still that simplistic. They could bring their own image and still deploy that same image to a thousand seats. Yes. With that's one, right. With one individual. With one individual, because with with our support for custom images and and within the provisioning policy, really what happens is that the the administrator in that case has their custom image, they'll upload that, and through the provisioning policy, they can assign groups to that, and that group can contain one person, a thousand a thousand users, it, so that it will scale out across many you know hundreds or thousands of users, all using that custom image that the administrator has maintained. And they do that in one place, one time, and it scales out to thousands. Awesome, thank you. So let's start digging into Windows 365 government a little bit more. You know, it was announced recently at Ignite is, and is now available in the government community cloud and the government community cloud high environments. And the story of Windows 365 government is really about and starts with how it meets the specific needs of US government agencies. And we were just talking about some of the dimensions along which we're, we're doing that. So we provide compliance for GCC and GCCI communities by meeting controls in you know, FedRAMP High and other US government you know, security and compliance requirements. And, and to serve that community of uh, users and customers within GCC and GCC High, the US government data centers for Windows 365 are available only to government agencies or their authorized uh, commercial companies. The data is stored within the continental United States. And of course, access to that content data is restricted to screen personnel and certified by third party auditors. Yeah, so, hey, Tony, um, we know that our government customers have seen slight differentials between our commercial offerings and what's available in our government clouds. When it comes to Windows 365, as far as supportability, as far as the feature sets, what's what's the difference that we can expect off the cusp? You know, we just went GA. What are the differences that our customers can sort of expect as they start to roll out Windows 365? And, and you know, what what's going to be slightly off skew from what they know of our offerings? Yeah, thanks, Roy. So one of the things that is really important to the team and with Windows 365 government is really adhering to a core principle and that it mirrors the experience of administrators and end users in the commercial cloud. And this means customers that are spanning commercial or government clouds or, or in, your, in your case, you know, uh, users, customers that, that have seen Windows 365 in the commercial cloud, they're going to use the same tools and have the same seamless experience across clouds. An example here is, is our provisioning policy and how provisioning of Windows 365 cloud PCs is done. And, and, and this kind of goes also back to you know, Shannon's question about how can we scale across and accelerate onboarding and, and how do we do this with thousands of users? And the way that it's done in commercial and government is the same. It's the same provisioning policy configuration as used in commercial, like I said, except that in this case, GCC and GCC high customers choose the US government data center in which to provision the cloud PCs. And this is you know, such a great story of leveraging the simplicity of Windows 365, where we enable that scale and accelerated onboarding while providing a consistent experience for users and administrators across clouds. And, and really, this is, this is only the beginning as we extend Windows 365 government to support more scenarios and environments in the future. So Tony, uh, we know that operating in a regulated US government cloud can be complex. What have we done to make this easier 
for our customers? Well, Shannon, thank you for asking. I'm, I'm really glad you asked that question because we've, we've invested in how to simplify things, you know, again, with the principle of simplicity. And for just a moment, I want to share with you how that principle of simplicity has been applied, especially for uh, GCC users and customers in the GCC community. You know, for GCC customers that require their data, their assets, their cloud PCs to be hosted in the government cloud, there is simplicity here for those users to use the same identity and credentials they're familiar with for the commercial cloud to access their cloud PCs and data that's secured in a US government data center. So with Windows 365 government, it is transparent, simple, and secure for users while administrators are meeting the stringent security and compliance requirements of the US government. And this approach enables customers to operate more cost effectively as the more cloud native they become. Um, I noticed we're focused a lot on GCC, but in my federal civilian government space, I have some GCC high customers. Are there any nuances that, that are different between this that is depicted before us and our GCC high customers? Well, thanks. Thanks for asking, Roy. And yeah, I, I should not forget, you know, the, the GCC high environment and, and the customers in that, in that cloud. So for GCC high, it's, it's very simple for them as well. They'll, they continue to use their government credentials that they've been using, um, all of the assets, everything is, is in the GCC high environment in those US Gov data centers. So the simplicity for them is that, and, and their users, is that they continue to use the same identities, the same credentials, the same tools um, that we've talked about. So it's a story of simplicity for GCC high, as well as what we've talked about for GCC. Awesome, thank you. Now we're ready to move on and let's dive into the architecture and, and really start looking in the innards of uh, Windows 365 government. For sure, Tony. In the following couple of slides, we'll get into the weeds a bit more. Now we're going back to GCC, but let's begin to break down how we are executing on that promise of simplicity for users and administrators while making sure compliance and security are addressed for your administrators. And we'll start with the administrator's experience. The cloud native Windows 365 architecture for government community cloud, GCC, is FedRAMP compliant without any additional configurations by administrators. It meets the executive order requirements for Zero Trust. This is our execution on keeping things simple for you, the customer, while taking the complications behind the scenes as your trusted cloud vendor. For customers in GCC, your experience in Azure today are the Azure commercial experiences, whether at Microsoft Intune for management or Microsoft Entra for your Azure AD cloud identity. However, we do recognize, as mentioned before, that the resource accessed and used by our end users, the data need to be secure and reside in the FedRAMP compliant cloud. At Microsoft, that is the Microsoft Azure for government or MAG environment. We also recognize for our customers already invested in Microsoft Azure commercial space, it'd neither be cost effective nor even fair to ask you to just rebuild everything in MAG. So the engineer solution was a dual cloud execution of the identity and management planes remaining in the Azure commercial side and all the cloud PC resources provisioned and accessed in the Microsoft Azure for government side with a Windows 365 specific microservices that runs in MAG to facilitate the authentication, authorization, and connections to the resources in MAG. What this means for the end user, quite simply, is that you have the potential to have just one identity to authenticate to on-premises resources as you always have and seamlessly access your cloud PC in the Microsoft Azure for government environment whether that be through the web portal at windows365.microsoft.com, seen here as IWP or the Information Worker Portal, or through the remote desktop app on Windows, Mac OS, iPad OS, iOS, and Android. And now also through the Windows 365 native client app, which has just recently gotten to public preview and is accessible as a Microsoft Store app already. One of the complications for end users we often heard that we wanted to address was the need for multiple identities that the end user was required to have one identity for on-premises, perhaps another identity for public cloud services, and certainly one identity specifically for accessing secured government resources. Though that's often secured by using a physical security key or something of that nature uh, for authentication. Regardless, multiple identities typically means multiple passwords and multiple passwords for singular purposes, 
can often mean repeated password use, oversimplification of passwords, and even writing down the user and password combination somewhere and making that information vulnerable. All, of course, are risky behaviors for identity and access security. For the purposes of Windows 365 Cloud PCs, we were purposeful in the architecture and the execution so that there are less potential for those security risks. Have one secure and even passwordless identity to use across your environments, not only to simplify the end user experience, but to keep users in the flow without breaking that experience, whether on premises, in the cloud, or of course, on your cloud PC. Thank you, Robert, for that great overview of the architecture from both the perspective of the administrator as well as the end user and, and how the simplicity message really has been implemented within that architecture. Next, let's move on to a couple demos where we want to show some of the things that are being done to, especially on the admin side. And we're going to take a look at two things. One is tenant mapping. So in the previous slides, we've been talking about in the architecture where we have the commercial tenant and the mag tenant. And one of the things that needs to be done is how do we establish that connection, that mapping between them? And we're gonna show a bit about how that's done. The next is when administrators want to access some of the resources that are in the Azure government cloud to be able to do things like set up hybrid AEDJ or be able to use their own network or use the use the custom images. You know, Shannon's question where administrators will want to bring in a custom image to be able to provision their cloud PCs. We're gonna we're gonna have a demo of how that how those permissions are set up. So let's go to the first demo. As an administrator, one of the things that I'll do is I'll download a PowerShell script from GitHub. In this case, organization mapping. The first thing that I'll do is I'll do an add where I enter in the tenant ID for my public cloud tenant. And then I'll also enter in the tenant ID from my government cloud tenant. With that, then I'll, I will enter the admin account and password. And when after that is complete, then the mapping between those, those two tenants in those two clouds will then be established. Thanks for that, Tony. With that tenant mapping completed, now we'll go in and take a look at how to give permissions necessary for the administrators to say, add your virtual network to use for your provisioning policies. So in this walkthrough, we will give permission to read resources and secure Microsoft Azure government tenant to be used to configure provisioning policies which are created in the Azure commercial tenant. As you saw, we start by authenticating the Microsoft Azure government tenant and the script will show you the tenant subscription name, tenant ID, and that it's in the Azure US government environment. It'll also show the Microsoft 365 service principal ID, which is needed to help configure the reader roles within the subscription. And with the subscription ID you see, we'll move forward by copying and pasting that into the prompt and hit enter. And this will show you information within the tenant, including the resource group that contains the VNet you're going to give read access to. Here, that is the GCC demo ANC resource group, copy and paste into the prompt. And this will show you the list of available VNets within the resource group. And again, you'll pick the VNet you want to give access to, in this case, the GCC demo for ANC VNet, and enter the information to continue. At this point, you'll wait for the script to take its course, which is to check whether the necessary permission needed for the administrator in Microsoft Intune in the commercial cloud will have enough rights to view, select, and use the designated resources to configure Azure network connections for Windows 65. If permissions already exist, you're good to go. And if not, it will grant those necessary permissions. Once complete, the script will show you all the resource IDs and information you'll need to configure the Azure network connections back in the Intune console. As they will start to show in just a few seconds here. And there we go. We have your subscription ID, your resource ID, your virtual network ID, and of course, your virtual network subnet ID. All that information necessary to configure your Azure network connection. All right, and now that we've gone through the demo to kind of walk through and understand how the environment is configured and administered, let's go and get some questions answered. What are some of the things we're hearing from the field? Hey, Robert, thank you. Um, 
So one of the biggest things that I've heard is any additional cost. We know that Windows 365 is licensed per seat. But after looking at the architecture and understanding, especially in the GCC environment, that there could be some slight additional configurations that are needed, are there any additional costs uh, associated with Windows 365? Yeah, that is a great question and something that's uh, worth absolutely mentioning and answering this way, which the short answer is yes, there are additional costs, but that with, comes with a caveat. What we showed you in the demo is connecting the two tenants and also to start using resources in VNet, or in the case of maybe using custom images, like in the question here, the case of using Azure Blob Storage. Now, those are all going to be constructs that live in the Microsoft Azure government, the mag side of things. So there will be a necessity for you to have a paid subscription in mag to be able to not only configure, but to use those VNS and Azure Blob Storage spaces. Awesome. Thank you. And as far as custom images, you're saying that that the um, Azure MAG subscription is required, and that's why there's an additional cost, right? So if, if I have a custom image, I have to pay for the storage of that in the MAG um, environment in order to be FedRAMP accredited. accredited. Correct. Because that storage is going to be also made secure, we're not saying you can't use custom images. Absolutely, you can. But in order to do so, that needs to be stored in a secure location that's already been FedRAMP approved. Now, there's, of course, the opportunity for customers to say, well, let's give gallery images a try. And that might be another path that we go that doesn't necessitate you to have to have to use storage and pay for it. Awesome. Thanks. Tony, um, I'd like to know, uh, how do you compare the capabilities between Windows 365 and AVD? So Teams is one of the most important you know, workloads out there with the hybrid work experience what we've seen in Windows 365, you know, on on the commercial side, is you know that that is the number one one of the number one asks of customers is Teams capabilities and Teams performance, and what we have across Windows 365 commercial and Windows 365 government, you know, it is being able to inherit all of the capabilities that are, are in AVD, and there's really parity across Windows 365 and AVD when it comes to Teams capabilities. Um, and that, that is the plan moving forward to be able to have Teams capabilities be surfaced across all of these environments um, and, and have parity in Teams capabilities and features. Because we, we know that the, the importance of uh, Teams and supporting the hybrid you know, workplace is only going to increase. Thanks, Shannon. Thanks, Tony. And in terms of, uh, can we co-manage with Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager for Windows updates as well? Another great question, Shannon. One of the themes that we've been talking about through the session is really simplicity and how we, how we enable users and administrators to use the tools and have the experiences that they already know and love, you know, the, what the end users know and love, and the tools and the controls that that administrators trust. And that continues here where the way that the tools for like endpoint configuration manager are used for physical devices, those translate directly into how uh, to manage Windows 365 cloud PCs, whether that's in the commercial cloud or in the government cloud. Thank you, Tony. Yeah. And so another thing, just thinking about the federal government space as a whole, right? So whether it's civilian or DOD, um, Robert, I'm curious, smart card reader redirection for CAC or PIV support, is, is that something that we offer with Windows 365? Absolutely. The answer is yes on that one. One of the things that we talked about a little bit earlier is about providing simplicity of experience as well as being able to continue the experiences that you already have today on premises. One of the goals of Windows 365 in general is to make sure we get as close to parity to an actual physical device as possible. And so it's only natural for us to be able to do the same things you do on a physical device that you would on a cloud PC. So again, the short answer, absolutely, yes, that's supported. And the reasons behind it is because that's what we strive for is to make sure that the end user experience remains simple, remains as similar, if not the same as possible. 
Thanks, Robert. That was, that's great. And, you know, the message around, you know, simplicity and parity across clouds, consistency in terms of the experience, that message that you just provided, you know, that, that has been the themes throughout, you know, what we've been talking about here. And is a, those are the pillars upon which we continue to evolve uh, Windows 365, both in the commercial cloud and in the government cloud. So with that, hey, Roy, uh, what's next for our customers? Hey, Tony, thanks. Um, so as we've heard, Windows 365 has been available since October 1st. Trials are available, and we are excited to help you as your cloud endpoint technical specialists start adopting Windows 365. With that being said, uh, we want to keep in mind that uh, the simplicity of this deployment means that you can access your Windows 365 cloud PC from multiple pl platforms. That's a desktop, that's a laptop, that's a tablet, that's, that's, your, that's your phone. Windows 365 has been made super simplistic and easy to access anywhere for your, for your users to be able to do their work securely. Keep in mind that we have Windows 10 gallery images available that are optimized for Microsoft Teams. And starting in November of 2022, Windows 11 images will be available. Shannon, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, what I'd like to add, Roy, is that we recommend that you modernize your legacy apps and your infrastructure and your enterprise agreement includes assistance from Aperture and Microsoft Fast Track will help you with your onboarding experience. Cool. And if you look down across the SKUs, you can see that Windows 365 offers a variety of compute options. So if you have um, developers that need a little more horsepower and higher end compute with an eight virtual CPU machine, or if you have standard office IT workstations that are doing nothing more than simply um, sending emails and writing Word documents, you can go all the way down to a two virtual CPU machine with the amount of storage necessary for the applications to uh, run on their device. So with that, Windows 365 is available. We're here, we're excited, and we're ready to help you get started with your Windows 365 cloud PC journey. Tony, do you have anything to add? No, that's great, Roy. Thanks for uh, wrapping us up there. And uh, thank you for everyone that's joined us today. We look forward to working with everybody on Windows 365 government enabling uh, your, your agencies to, to use it. And uh, thank you again for being here. And thank you, thank you, Roy. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Robert. Uh, this has been great. It's been fun. And um, yeah, let's go out there and get it done. <laughs>